Hi, it's Robin. I'll be driving down from here in Canada to Milwaukee, Wisconsin this coming weekend for the Midwest Gaming Classic. That's April 13 and 14, 2019. I'm really looking forward to it. It's one of my favorite times of the year. I'll be seeing the friends that I worked with on the C64DTV project way back in 2004, 2005, and a bunch of other friends like Jim Happel, who worked on VR64, and Eric Olson, who knows more about the TI-99 4A computer than anybody I've ever met. Uh, last year I also hung out with Ben Heck a bit and did some Commodore pet programming, and also got my picture taken with Billy Mitchell of King of Con fame or infamy. And I'm hoping some of you will be there too. If you are, come and look for me. I'll be in the Classic Gaming and Computing Museum. And I'll, I think I'll be bringing a PET and a VIC-20. Maybe I'll even bring the 128D. I'm not sure yet. But because I'll be away this weekend, that means I don't have much time for a video this week. So I've got a, just a relatively short one. And usually I like to go deep into everything I'm explaining, like the, the why. Uh, but this time I'm just going to show a bunch of interesting things. And then probably in future episodes we'll get into it. Also, some of the commenters seem to really enjoy explaining <laughs> either how I messed up or showing what they know, and they are welcome to do that here. So maybe we'll get some good explanations. Some of these things I don't know why they react the way they do. I'll show them. They're interesting, and we'll come back to some of them in another episode. Okay, so the first one is just, let's do a line like rem and then shift L and then on the next line you just do whatever print hello okay and we can run that program and it prints hello as you would expect but we'll list it it prints the rem and then it prints a syntax error so this is really curious you actually just cannot list this program without it failing with a syntax error but you can try listing the next line and on 11 dash indicates list everything from 11 on and then it will show the rest of the program. So this is a funny thing. This is worth a whole video on its own. The various tricks you can do with REM. Okay, that's the first one. Now you probably know that you can just do a print. The question mark is the abbreviation for print and they can do things like add two numbers together and it prints the result. You can also concatenate strings like hell low and it'll print it together. But if you start trying to combine these together, it gets a bit weird. So if you just do like high plus one, you'll get a type mismatch error because it can't mix strings and numbers together directly like that. But here's a really weird one. If you do two quotes and then zero, you get type mismatch. But if you change that into a negative zero, it actually does a reset or at least a break on the computer. And you see it reset my cursor color. I'm going to try and remember that throughout this episode. So this is a bug in the routine that interprets or parses what you type in on the command line. And here's a related one. If you add a number and then a string and then that negative zero, it does even worse than just the break reset or break interrupt. It actually totally crashes the computer and even stop, even stop restore will not fix it. The only way out and I can't press the button on my super snapshot. So the only way out of this one is if you happen to have a reset button. That'll get you back out. Or if you're on a C64 without a reset button, you actually have to turn the computer right off. So in my first ever episode, Commodore 64 Basic All 32 Errors, I actually used the this routine that prints out the error messages. But if you don't initialize it properly, it behaves kind of strange. Okay, that was weird. But if you hit stop restore, and then immediately poke 781, 96, 
which I believe initializes just the X register, and then then call 58251. It does this. I've seen some people online call this like a screensaver or secret Easter egg. I don't think it's that deliberate. I think it's just calling the error routine with with particular initialization parameters happens to produce this pattern. Kind of funny though, eh, that you get that over one line of basic in immediate mode. This next one is pop into the monitor, my super snapshot. And you can do this with any monitor if you had Supermon or a different cartridge than the Super Snapshot. And we will just disassemble at location FFF6. This is right near the end of memory. And these four bytes, which are interpreted over here as RRBY. And as I understand it, RR stands for Robert Russell, who was, I believe, the main designer on the VIC-20. And he was in charge of integrating BASIC and the kernel together, presumably starting somewhere on the PAT, but definitely on the VIC and the Commodore 64. And he was even responsible that you probably know how kernel is spelt this way on the Commodore 64, while in most operating systems it's spelt with an E. Apparently that was just a typo that caught on because he put it in the documentation. So... RR for Robert Russell, who was a significant contributor, and beside it, BY for Bob Jans, the designer of the SID chip, of the sound chip in the 64 and the 128, one of the most beloved sound chips ever. Still today, music being written constantly for the SID. So it's a neat little Easter egg that I think a lot of people don't know about. Hey, okay, here's another one. If you just type numbers in to the interpreter and press return. Okay, you get a syntax error, presumably because that number is too big to be interpreted as a line number. It's actually 63999 is the longest line number you can do. Let's try 64,000. You get a syntax error. So if you try really long numbers, like we just tried that 350718, 350719, you get a syntax error, 350720, the computer freezes. I don't usually get that one. Usually I get just a break, which is just goes back to the ready prompt. And as it turns out, a whole bunch will do that. 350800, there's the break. 350900 and so on. There's a, a large range there where typing in that number causes the interpreter to crash and apparently even lock up sometimes. Okay, and so this again, this is some sort of bug in the way the interpreter parses, but I don't know exactly what's going on, maybe in a future episode. Okay, just have a couple more short examples here. This one's a little program. If we do line zero, doesn't really matter, but we'll do that. We're going to print out the value of A, which is automatically initialized to zero. Then we're going to add 0 0.01 to A. So that'll be 0 0.01, 0 0.02, 0 0.03. You could think of it as cents on the dollar, increasing one cent, two cent, all the way up. And then just because we learned about this last episode, uh, I'll do the go to with no parameter, which will go back to zero. This, this isn't necessary for this quirk, but I just thought I'd throw that in in case you didn't see it last time. If you're interested in that, check out my previous episode about optimizing basic. Okay, so we're just gonna go ahead and run this. And I don't know if you know that if you hold down the control key, it actually slows down the output both of listings and of even basic programs when you print. So here we go, it's just printing along. You see every time it reaches 10, it automatically truncates to 0 0.4. Basically we're at 51, let's call them cents, 0 0.6, 0 0.7. And here we go. 
There. <laughs> Suddenly it gets a little weird. And if we keep playing it run there, it corrects itself at one. But then at one, two, three, it gets all crazy again. Okay, so this is actually a very common problem with floating point implementations. Even much more powerful computers do have this problem. Uh, maybe not exactly the same, or it takes a lot more to see the problem. But no matter what, rounding errors will creep in when you're doing floating point math. And this is one of the reasons why you shouldn't do like if A equals B. If you're just comparing zero to zero, it should work. But if you are trying to compare point one, two, four, and you've reached it by adding, well, you can see that's, that is not going to be equal here, even though you'd think it would be correct. Okay, so that's one example of a floating point rounding error producing weird output. Okay, and I've got one more sort of similar example. For this one, we'll make a loop for a equals one, two, nine, and then line 20. The line 20 looks convoluted, but all it's doing is printing out nine to the power of whatever a is, one through nine equals, and then it's actually calculating nine to the power of a. Okay, and we'll try running this program. Okay, so nine to the power of one is nine, yes. Nine to the power of two is, well, nine to the two is nine times nine, that's 81. But the value we're getting back is 81.0001. Okay, nine to the three should be 81 times nine again would be 729. But again, with the rounding errors, and you can see that at each stage, the number gets bigger, but kind of strangely, the floating point value is always rounded off the same error. So this is actually quite a, quite a big error, a whole tenth, and that corrects itself when you get to nine to the nine. So again, this is floating points, but it's just interesting that even the exponent function produces those kind of errors. Okay, so that's a number of quirks, bugs, whatever you want to call them, uh, maybe Easter eggs in the C64. Which one did you find the most interesting? Leave a comment. And if you know of some other interesting quirks in the 64, then leave a comment below about that too. If there's a whole bunch of interesting ones, maybe I'll make another video about it. Okay, thanks for watching. We'll talk to you next time.